Hey there, this is Mandy from 69X and this is the 69X live show and I am absolutely honoured to have a special guest on today's show from Girls School and Cyteria, Jackie Chambers. So how have you been coping through lockdown? This year has been bonkers, yeah? It's been an absolutely mental year, hasn't it? I mean, I'm definitely going to remember this, but all for the wrong reasons, I'm guessing. Um, but it started off really well. I mean, Girls' School, yeah. we had a UK tour, which was like the first in, I don't know how long, we've not done any, not many UK gigs in the last few years, really, apart from the Motorhead tours we've done in the UK. So luckily we got a, then COVID started to hit, oh, it'll be over in a couple of months, so our tour manager went off with all our gear and all, all that, you know, the merchandise, everything, thinking we're just going to be getting back together for the Saxon gigs in, I think it's May or something like that, which is going to happen. And of course, yeah. when I came home, to go on tour with Cyteria because we just uh, released an album, um, yeah, twenty first, a new album. So we've got all these great reviews, and uh, we're just about to, and magazines, all that adverts in for tour. And we did about three or four, and then we had to, you know, we had to stop because it all got oh, shut no. down. We were buying yeah. tickets, but we couldn't come because they were just too frightened. Because at that time it was like you know real fear mongering, wasn't it, going on? Yeah, so, yeah it's kind of um in whatever it was March end of March, whatever it was, and that's yeah. it. I had my birthday in lockdown, 27th of March is my birthday, so that was a fun day. <laughs> oh no! Oh, what did you do? Did you have a party? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. No. It, it's all right. I don't really do much now anyway, anyway, but I was hoping to be out doing a gig. I was supposed to be doing a gig on my birthday. I would have been at Glasgow Barrowlands. Oh, oh right. Lightning. Um, Glasgow Barrowlands and London and Birmingham were supposed to be playing the Saxon. Yeah, blimey. My birthday, that was, a, you know, a big deal for me, so I've never played that one. And it's always the one I've always wanted to do, to have the last couple of other lands. Yeah. So that would have been, March, I was sick when I got cancelled. <laughs> oh, no. So all of the dates, I'm assuming, have been rearranged and rescheduled for next year, yeah? yeah most of them. I mean, it's, it's one of those things for managers and agents, it must be a nightmare, because they're literally, every band this year is going to yeah. be booked for next year. And it's almost like... It's going to clash something rotten, isn't it? Because obviously, yeah. And it's impossible. I mean, obviously, if you book a Friday and Saturday night, it's going now, we miss Saturday and Sunday, whatever. So it's got to fit in with everything, you know, it's just going to be so difficult. And I, nobody knows when all this yeah. is going to finish, do they? So it no. is, it's still going on at this time next year, because I know there's a lot of places that are not even booking till August next year. Yeah. So Absolutely. You know, on that scale, there's going to be a lot of bands that are not going to be gigging at all. Yeah, yeah, so that is kind of the, yeah, that's kind of the word on the street, isn't it? Really, like most people are looking at kind of August and September time as to when you know things might actually sort of change. But I mean, you know, it must also be a nightmare for all those festivals, for instance, Download and Steelhouse, and you know, I was supposed to be going to yeah. Yeah, like Glastonbury is not going to be booking because I guess for them it's di more difficult for the really bigger bands, you know, like the ones who yeah play to thousands all the time because they've got a uh, the, the the festivals have got to justify the uh, lack of attendance, as it were, because there's going to be less tickets sold. They still have to right. pay the band and the crew and everything else, the lighting, the stage, and they still got to hire out the same things, pay yeah. all the same, people, but for half the money or third of the money coming in. Yeah, so you yeah. can kind of understand how the festivals aren't going to be able to make it work. Yeah. And I guess yeah. the bands on the uh, girls' school, uh, obviously we're, we're going to struggle a little bit, but bands like Cyteria, because we're just on the sort of like that lower level, as it were, we can just yeah. play a club. And we can do that, yeah. the chicken in a basket, as I call it, you know, sit, to play, yeah. play, play, sitting down eating. <laughs> you know, it's like being yeah. waiting for the big or the star or the tombola or something to come on. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, Meat <laughs> battle. <laughs> I did a gig, um, I think about a couple of months ago, and it was in uh, um, Chesterfield at Real Time Live, one of my favourite places. And uh, it, it set out the tables like a school. Oh, <laughs> was like it? School. it was brilliant. I mean, everybody there, we knew a lot of people there, and it was full. But they had to yeah. hold up spoons when they wanted a drink. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> it was like, 
I want to go to the toilet, you know, that sort of thing when you're at school. Yeah, yeah. You hold up a spoon and then, well, and spoon. Do you know, it's do like, you know, you know I can see all the alcoholics like that. Yeah, 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 the spoon is going up like this every two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty effective. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's totally, you know, it's not just had an impact, I don't think, this year on, obviously, you know, the cancellation of gigs, concerts and festivals. But also, I think it's also changed the dynamics of what a music event is, you know, and I think that's what people really struggle. Because I know that, um, you know, a f I guess a few months after lockdown hit, you know, um, there were kind of a couple of drive through events and such. Mm -hmm. And even that, to me, looked like totally bonkers because, you know, being a musician or a performer, you feed off the audience, don't you? Yeah. And it's so difficult when they're just so, you know, in a vast space, you know, spread out. It must be really, really odd. And literally, you can just imagine, can't you, as soon as a couple of beers go in, just people just beeping the horns and they just yeah. say, you're doing it for everybody else. It's just the people aren't going to sit in the car. You can't. You can probably sit at some gigs, but you can't really sit at a rock gig. You know, it's not like. No. You just can't, can you? Even all the ones we no. played on tours, you, like people stand up. It's just a natural thing you do when you've got rock music. <laughs> you want to stand Yeah, yeah. Move. Move. Absolutely. Move. Absolutely. Whatever you can do. But you can't yeah, sit yeah. still, can you? No, it it's just seems like this. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're at a festival, you know, half of it really is is the audience you know because you're stuck you know when you're going to see a band that you really want to watch you're stuck in the middle of the audience and you're kind of feeding off everyone around you as well as enjoying the music you know and equally you know as a performer you know you're taking the energy from that audience and seeing it you know in its full kind of you know display right in front of your eyes and and that's how you know that's what makes a gig isn't it you know and, and makes the adrenaline flow you know I don't think gigs won't be the same. I mean, it's like doing... Realistically, you might as well be at a rehearsal room just practicing, yeah. you? It's like and just giving it your yeah, own. Yeah. Like a pre... You know, if you're just rehearsing the gig as you're going to do it, but no yeah. audience. You just play like a routine. You're just going through it like a routine. Just, yeah, just go... But when you've got an audience there, you're buzzing, you know? It's like yeah. adrenaline kicks in. They're enjoying oh, it. That gives you, you feedback off that. They feedback off that, and it's just like a loop of energy uh, and you yeah. feeding for each other the vibration is amazing isn't it it's just yeah amazing. yeah you can't, you can't replicate you, know, you can't a live crowd you can't do that in a rehearsal you can't do that in a stream yeah. it's gotta be a live crowd that's yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know i think that's what all the bands have struggled so much with and i know that you know most of the bands that i speak to you know they're on different kind of levels in terms of sort of their mindset about music at the moment how have you been managing that period with, with you know have you been cre you know creating new music through this time well, the thing isn't it? it's using the time wisely i think when it first kicked in we all thought oh it's only a couple of months or whatever yeah. you know we've probably got back to gig in just a couple of months lost let's use it to be creative and a lot yeah. of people would like learning a new hobby i think you know like i was cooking and gardening i've never done gardening in life so just talk, pick up something new yeah and you think, <laughs> we just released an album so it doesn't seem pointless to write another one when we're still promoting and not even play the new songs yet yeah but um because time's going on <laughs> i'm starting yeah. to write more, more yeah because it's uh, it's becoming that that's now we're thinking it's not even limited till next year so the album yeah. we're going to promote it is a, a year old <laughs> Two years yeah. old by then, so we will be yeah, yeah. rehearsing this Saturday with Citeria, which is always brilliant. That I mean, I'm lucky that Citeria are Yorkshire based, so we can all get together. We're very close. Whereas oh, girls' school is impossible because uh, Tracy lives in Spain and Kim and Denise live down south. I mean, Lee, oh. but realistically, there's not a chance, you know. Of, yeah. You know, rehearsal, you know, but we're starting yeah, to put some little and ideas ready for a new album next year we're hoping oh that's brilliant. the plan yeah. oh that'll be amazing so when's the last time thanks it yeah no i know wait when's the last time that you've seen the girls from girl school is it well, just on the tour? yeah on the tour on when we did the tour when what yeah. we finished it was the middle of february i think we finished yeah just about it's yeah. before kim's mom's birthday and that is gonna be middle of february about 16th of february no. See online because we've got on Zoom and everything. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, 
fallen a lot, but yeah, we don't really, because we live nowhere near each other. It's, and yeah. You're not allowed to travel. <laughs> and twice again, and it's kind of impossible, really. Yeah. The bigger lot we were at the beginning, because we were yeah. thinking, oh, it's like, for May, for, uh, uh, March for Saxon, then it was locked down on the flights, and ah, it's oh, just been really so, I look at my calendar now, I've had to get a different calendar because it's it's depressing. <laughs> you look yeah. at the calendar, it should be in Russia, should be in Japan, should be yeah. in Finland. It's like, <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I know. it's so like, now I've got my Zen calendar up there now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we've kind of all turned to that, haven't we? I think, you know, because the mental side of it, the mental health side of it, I think has also been quite, you know, dramatic for a lot of people. And you talked about Zen there, and I know myself, you know, I've totally got into, like, essential oils and things like that. It's like I need... Doing this, when, you, when you're when you producing it yourself, you're sort of thinking ahead about how you're going to cut things. And, yeah, it's a constant journey. It's a constant thinking process. It, it blows your mind sometimes. sometimes. It makes your life easier if you know it all now, isn't it? Yeah, well, well, I need a film. Like Lucas said last night when I was chatting to him, he said, you need a film crew. You're in, like, three places at the same time. I'm like, yeah, I could have no. I need a bloody film crew. Um, yeah, you never know. One day, it might happen. <laughs> Move over, Jonathan Ross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so Jack has joined us today to go through some amazing bands from around the world that 69X has hand-selected and me and Jackie are going to check out the official videos and the songs for these seven bands. <laughs> Okay, so the first song we're going to kick off today's show with is Jamie Porter Band with Ready For Action. Very, very good player. Really good player. I like some of the backing vocals in that as well. Some really good harmonies. Sweet! 
absolutely love this band. I mean, I've promoted them on the show a few times actually. These guys are absolutely tremendous. What do you think, Jackie? I thought it was really good, especially that middle eight bit. It's, it's typical, isn't it? Hands in the air, come on, everybody, get your hands together. <laughs> you go live and you can see the band playing that to the audience and really the audience feeding from that and going for it. It's just one of those classic, classic rock type things, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. I love these guys. <laughs> are going to check out an amazing band from Wales, Raider, with Give It All You Got. Okay, Jackie, I've just got to say, this chorus, I'm not sure about you, but I've played this on my radio show a few times in the past, and once you've heard it, you can't get it out of your head for days. What do you reckon? Yeah. The little earworm, isn't it, that one? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's a really good <laughs> vocal as well. It's got a very strong vocal. Yeah, really Yeah, strong. yeah. Give it all you got. Give it all you got. I wanna see you. Give it all you got. I wanna feel your love. Oh, I need to know that. I need to know that. I need to know. Okay, so that was Raider and Give It All You've Got. Absolutely love the video, love the white background. 
Jackie, your overall comments of Raider? A catchy little song and it's like a, a, a nice sort of 80s style feel, I think, that one. It's got a nice, yeah, that sing-along type thing, isn't it, which is another good one for a crowd. Can't, yeah, yeah. Can't, you can't lose I, if you've got a song that people can sing along to, obviously. Totally agree. And I really love their logo as well. I, I really love the artwork that they've got around their logo. It's really cool. And I think exactly. they've done a great great job with the video. And actually, yeah. as a little surprise, I did actually reach out to some of these bands and I do have a question from oh. Raider. So I'm going to read that out to you now. <laughs> so they said, um, hey there, Jackie. Our question to you is if you could have written one song or riff from any hard rock song from the 80s or 90s, not including girl school, what would it have been? And personally, he wished, that was Mark from Raider, that he'd written the opening riff from Edge of a Broken Heart by Vixen. Absolutely love that band, I remember those girls, blimey. Um, and he said, what a killer song. Oh, there's so many. I mean, the 80s and 90s, what? They're amazing, amazing songs, yeah. aren't they? I mean, one that jumped to mind straight away is probably one of my favourite songs of all time, and that's She Sells Sanctuary of the Cult. Oh, man, yeah. I totally love that. It tingles every time I hear that riff. And I told Philip yeah. that it's just, it's just like a lot of his playing influenced me in the early days. Just that yeah. riff, that melodic riff, you could just sing it on its own, couldn't you? Yeah, you could. The opening, that little flanged sound, and they're like, yeah. <laughs> Sweeping sound, <laughs> I just get goosebumps every time. I, even now, I can still listen. Yeah, to yeah, that. It yeah, yeah. And that jump coming. Yeah, yeah. It's got that haunting kind of. Yeah, absolutely. It's got like a haunting melody, hasn't it? I mean, it's just. Yeah, yeah. I I completely agree with you. That now it sounds so eighties because the production. Yeah. Steve Brown production that one, but it sounds eighties, but it still sounds relevant as well. It still sounds fresh as well, even though it's got yeah. like your flange and you you know your chorus type sound and then your big snare drum reverbs. Yeah. <laughs> it's so typically eighties, but it still sounds really fresh and modern even when I hear yeah, it now. Yeah. Great vocal, great music. I just love that song. It's just brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Did you love it? Did you ever get to play with that band at all, like back in the day? I mean, I've, been, I've seen them so many times live and got to meet yeah. them last time. They were on top. But, um, well, I mean, some people would say that I do play with them because I play a lot of their, their, a lot of their riffs are in my guitar playing. But <laughs> <laughs> a lot of songs we pick them apart and think, mm, that sounds rather like Billy Duffy. <laughs> 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 That's the biggest compliment you can have, isn't it, as a guitarist, if somebody likes you enough to copy Absolutely. you or you know, uh, be influenced by you. How, how many times do you actually, so how many hours per day actually, I'm interested on this, do you actually sort of play guitar, you know, not not rehearse or practice or whatever it may be, but just pick up the guitar and play, how many hours? I don't know, I just push and I don't really, I don't play guitar much at all really, at home. Don't I you? I, I mean obviously when I first started, you play all the time, you practice, yeah. you practice songs. I mean, realistically now, I won't pick my guitar up unless I'm writing the song. So if I go upstairs in my little studio upstairs, then obviously yeah. I pick the guitar because I'm writing, but I, I wouldn't ever sit and... I never sat there rehearsing scales, ever. <laughs> Even when yeah. I learned to play, I never rehearsed scales. <laughs> I like to... <laughs> I taught myself, so it's just relatively... I just yeah. sort of play things. If it sounds good, then it's it. And we're going to move on now to great guys, actually. I've got to say, Sons of Liberty. Kick along with this one. Good. Damn if you do, and damn if you don't.
for you to sing along to. And it's live as well. They played it so well live. The harmonies, everything, the solos, all fantastic. And you can read another crowd pleaser, definitely. You just sing along with that one. Little earworms. Yeah, yeah. Damned if you don't. Damned if you do. 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 Sons of Liberty actually had a question um, oh. to ask you, so here it is. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, Moose here from Sons of Liberty. Uh, thanks for having us on. Uh, here's a question for Jackie, um, and it relates to being in two bands, the whole Citeria girl school thing. Um, Back in the day when we put Sons of Liberty together for the first time, it was kind of a side project uh, for all five of us actually. I think all of us were in at least one other band and uh, oh god, what a nightmare it caused. Uh, scheduling, uh, even rehearsals, let alone sort of gigs and stuff. It was a, it was a total nightmare pulling stuff together. So uh, um, over time, um, all of the sons have kind of dropped everything else and we're now 100% focused on Sons of Liberty. Uh, I think I was the first to do that and Steve and Mark were probably the last because they, I think they were in three bands each actually. So uh, so anyway, here's my question for Jackie is um, how the hell do you manage the commitment of, uh, of two bands? The diary stuff and the songwriting stuff as well. Hell yeah! <laughs> Yeah, well, we should know. <laughs> uh, it's actually easier than you think because um, cause I've got two good managers. So Giles for girls' school and Andy for a uh, Citeria. They kind of liaise with each other as well. So yeah. things have clashed, and I've yeah, had to do the girls' school one because that's the um, I need to do that. But um, yeah, it's it's interesting because. Uh, I like being busy. That's one of the reasons I started another band. I didn't want to just be doing gigs here and there because Girls School have been going together for 42, nearly 43 years. And it's yeah. like they don't want to gig as much as I do. So, you know, we're all at a certain age now, let's say, that we yeah. don't want to be out on the road all the time. We like our home comforts, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> but I just love it. I love, I'm a, I'm a live animal. I love playing live. I love crowds. Yeah. I love to meet people. And, so I wanted to do more. So when it kind of just slowed down a little in 2015, I put Citeria together. And yeah, then it was really quiet. And all of a sudden we got a motorhead tour. <laughs> so it just yeah. got <laughs> we couldn't do, I couldn't actually, I, I put the band together in the end of 2015, but we couldn't do anything until middle of 2016. Because I was on yeah. tour school. But um, it worked out really well. And we just kind of, I because I was mainly doing the booking myself at that point, I just made sure that nothing clashed. Or we do gigs together, so like we do a festival and yeah. both bands on like, so if Girls School were headlining, then I put Citeria, I try and get Citeria either two bands or more before, yeah. so a little break so I can, can, can get some tweet or whatever. So yeah, yeah, it's been really good, I find it, I find it fun doing it, it's, it's better to be, as we found out now, being in lockdown, <laughs> We don't want to be not busy, do we, as musicians? Yeah. We're moaning now that we're not on the road. We're moaning that we haven't got enough gigs. So oh, yeah, I'll make it. More gigs and merrier for me, just bring it on. Yeah.
that was Verity White and Strange Times. That was a brand new single actually and I think that video is truly brilliant. I love the animation. What do you think, Jen? Yeah, because it, set, it sets it apart from everything else because it's like there's no standard band in the background doing the posing, which, you know, it's, it's fine, but it's nice to have something different every now and then, isn't it? And it's yeah. Like, oh, it's, I absolutely love that guitar riff. I kept singing that, thinking, oh, a, a nice simple riff, but it is really <laughs> nice, isn't it? Really catchy. I went over to YouTube and watched something else uh, at first. Watched her doing that live actually with the um, uh, acoustic guitar, the guy with the acoustic guitar. It's really good. Yeah. It's just a good little little riff and a nice little song. It's got a good voice. Yeah. Yeah. I keep the shot that name, uh, Verity White, on the, on the circuit. So yeah, I'm glad I've got yeah. to see that. Yeah. yeah, and I love the fact they've used like a drunk cat in it as well. Yeah. I think that's like really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really cleverly thought out little video there, and it's it's definitely it sticks in your mind. It will you'd remember that one above all the others when you say the seven bands which video, and you say that one stuck out because obviously it's very very different, isn't it? It is. Yeah. No. Absolutely. It's absolutely. When you're in lockdown as well, isn't it? Do a cartoon while you're in lockdown. <laughs> 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 a song called Goodbye World while we were in lockdown, so it's, it's oh, made right. it decent because you can get together first lockdown on top of that, yeah. So next up, you're going to be really familiar with this next song <laughs> because <laughs> it Adam. <laughs> Adam and the Hellcats, next up, Rule Britannia. Yay. <laughs> So you got involved in this single and I believe that Adam reached out to you and just asked you if you'd be interested in playing on the song, yeah? That's right, yeah. I'm, um, Andy, our manager, he's kind of a mutual friend of the two. 
And um, I got a few people asking me during the first lockdown if I'd do some guitar or if I'd do this and that. And I said to Andy, look, I'll do it. If, if I like the song, I'll get yeah. involved. I basically said that to everybody is, I will do it if I like the song, but I don't like, you know, I want to be enjoying what I do. I don't want to just do it, you know. So, and I listened to the song and straight away I thought, yeah, I really like this song. He's got some good lyrics, the tune was good. And I was humming, it passed the old grey whistle test, let's say. I was humming yeah. it all day long. I was in, oh, Britannia, wanna yeah. go. I was singing it all day long. I was I'm thinking, yeah, I like this. And I thought, I can do that guitar to that and like that. And I could think of ideas straight away. And that's yeah. what you you want it something that you're into you know if i'm yeah. gonna run into it as it were and play on it i want to be enjoying what i'm doing bits got cut out um yeah, yeah I remember i'm writing this guitar riff and I thought, oh i really like that and he had you i'm thinking oh good i can use that now for a girl school song <laughs> so it's kind of worked out a lot and then he said to me can i do a bit of video so i had to learn how to use the video camera <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it was a bit of fun actually yeah and we're doing a couple of gigs with them next year as well really cool guys. yeah no you mentioned that actually you said there's a, there's you know quite a few things going on next year i think with yeah. those guys I know they're, uh, they've just announced they're doing the Wild Hearts. Uh, they're uh, playing with them, yeah, on the, in August or September, I think September. I think September. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a long way away, but it's, it's going to be here before we know it, isn't it? <laughs> it is, yeah. Like, oh, it's not until next year, and then it comes, it's like, wow, it's here already. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So Tony, obviously you know Tony really well from the band, um, he's also sent in a question, so here it is. Hi Jackie, Tony from Adam and the Hellcats, got our old friend Lemmy over my shoulder and my Citeria album in my hand. Just wanted to ask you, when you're out on tour and you're about to go on stage, what's going through your head? As you see the house lights go down, the intro music go up, have you ever frozen? What's going on? Uh, I want to know the in-depth of the rock goddess who is Jackie Chambers. No. So, I don't really get stage fright. I, I get not stage nerves. I think it's excitement, adrenaline. I love playing live. I think obviously when I was when I first started, and I was a young punk rocker, I had a few, a lot of drinks before. Yeah. And, and, you know, but I didn't really. I think since being in girls' school, not really. I think the first gig possibly because it were like I were like a rabbit in headlights. I'm a first, yeah. Because obviously yeah. I'm stepping into Kelly Johnson's shoes. And I'd, uh, before girls' school, I'd never played a lead guitar solo in a band in my life. I was just a punk rocker playing bar chords and riffs, you know? Yeah. So, uh, and I thought, we girls' school at that point, this was like, not, well, when I met him, it was about 1995. And of course, yeah. I, well, I didn't join until 99, officially. Yeah. But, so I've been, because um, Kelly had taught me the songs and Chris had taught me the songs. So I had to learn how to play a lead guitar very, very quickly. And I thought, oh, I'll be in a couple of gigs, just a couple of gigs here and there, because I weren't doing yeah. that much then. And all of a sudden, I got this gig in Luton the following year. And uh, there were cameras there, there were a radio station. It was like, ah, thrown straight in at the deep end, the new girl. <laughs> and I must have stood on stage like, still, crashing, <laughs> really concentrating <laughs> on what I'm doing. You look at me now, I'm just running around and microphone faces and whatever, but you know, back then it's like, yeah, I suppose, so I want, I don't get nervous, I get that nervous energy and that's a different thing, I think, now. It is. Yeah. yeah no. If you don't have that, there's no edge to the gig, if you know what I mean, it's... Yeah, yeah, it's, no, you've you know, got all that. I mean, now I quit drinking, um, oh, nearly six years ago now, but before that, a, a lot of gigs I used to go on, I think, oh, a great gig, I go. We've done a gig, <laughs> you know, so I've had a few drinks. <laughs> so, yeah, so now I can remember them. I can hear all my dumb, my bum notes now. I can actually remember I've played the bum note now because I'm sober. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I do enjoy it a lot more now because I can remember it. And um, yeah, I, I just love it. 
So that nervous excitement, but I, I don't think I've ever frozen, no. Yeah, Just excellent. <laughs> So next up, we are going to play uh, some amazing guys. And I know you're probably familiar with these guys. They've just been working their absolute socks off. This is Blitz and One in a Billion. a good title straight away yeah absolutely another, another catchy chorus so definitely singing that one it reminds me a little it's got a nickelback type feel you know that sort of thing of his voice is like nickelback and daughtry his daughtry that sort of type voice lovely voice yeah oh, I love that, actually yeah no i totally agree and i i absolutely love the way they've done this video as well i love again it, you know it's it's um you know, not a live performance, it's more of an official video, but I love the fact that they've put effects in there. And I think the guys are great. I mean, you know, they, like I say, they work their socks off. Every, you know, when I've met them, they're just so down to earth. And that's what I love about this band as well. They're really honest and they're really, you know, just passionate about what they do. So what did you think of the song and the video together? Well, I mean, it's good because they're a three-piece band and it's a powerful band, a three-piece, a bit like your motorhead type style, you know, because they're three-piece and that. And it's nice to see a drummer with a microphone as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not, I mean, we've got an inside here, but it's not often you see that. And it's got hey. each of the drummer as much as they did the guitar and bass player, which is nice because that does sometimes get lost on videos, I think. You know, the drummer's just stuck at the back and has an occasional yeah. shot. But it's nice to be in from the drummer. It's got some good drum patterns in there as well. Hi, it's Stuart from Blitz here. So, Jackie, tell me, how have things changed for women in rock from girls' school's beginnings to, uh, to present day in Siteria? I hope you're good, take care, and keep rocking. 
say things have changed a lot, but in some ways they haven't. <laughs> I mean, I think the girls' school were very fortunate that um, the reputation, because we've been around a long time, is, is uh, we've got the respect from the guys. But I hear a lot of horror stories from girls in bands that still get that same disrespect and, you know, oh, you're good in the band, you know, you're carrying your guitar for your boyfriend and that sort of thing. You know, it's uh, like, you'd think these days there wouldn't be any of that. But uh, this is unfortunately, which is very, very sad in this day and age. So, I mean, you can't tell if it's a girl or a guy playing an instrument. There's some talent out there. I've seen a lot of girl bands. I think, wow, they are fantastic. You know, yeah. you guys, that that if it's a good song and they play, you know, who cares if they're yeah, a woman? <laughs> no, absolutely. I totally agree. So finally. Um, we're going to play uh, the brand new single, actually, only released um, just a, well, probably a couple of weeks ago, actually, now, um, by Dax and Roxanne, Give It Time. <laughs> Another good video, solid rock yeah. band, good solos, good singing. It's another catchy song, isn't it? It is. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Those guys work really hard as well. I mean, they're um, they are absolutely tremendous at social media. Actually, I have to say, uh, they do a huge amount of posting and they keep their fans engaged. Hey Jackie, it's Simon from Dax and Roxanne. Hope you're doing well and keeping safe. We were told by Mandy that we could ask you some questions here. So my question would be, do you have any fun games that you could share with us that you guys play on the road to pass the time and have fun? And another question I have is, um, we bought ticket to see you play in London with Saxon, Crocus and Diamond Head. 
And as you know, this show has already been postponed like two or three times. So we're really looking forward to hopefully see you next year, I guess. Um, if we could be cheeky, do you think you could sneak us into the backstage after the show so we can meet with you guys? And also, being from Switzerland, uh, Crocus uh, have been a huge inspiration for us and we actually never got to see them. And that's gonna be their farewell tour. So if you're able to sneak us in so you could meet them, that would be brilliant and super amazing. That's it for us. Cheers. See you soon. Uh, good question, actually. Um, no. Yeah, so, yeah with, with Girl School, um, this last tour, actually, thinking about that one, when we were in the UK, we had a we split a van with a table, as you do. And yeah. um, Tim brought along Frustration, you know the game Frustration? I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You literally press a little button down and the dice flicks, and you've got little uh, counters, and you're chasing each other around and wiping each other off the board until you all get into the centre, as it were. And it's yeah. a brilliant thing. all you can hear is scream like, ah! She's taking me off the board! <laughs> and so all the drivers are jumping every 10 seconds when we're all screaming. <laughs> but it certainly kept us awake for, us, for a good few hours and kept the, the time goes quick when you're playing games as well. So yeah, we do tend to take silly games really, you know, it's the, the fun ones. Yeah. You have a laugh with quick ones, not Monopoly or anything like that, you won't want to take that yeah. until. But we do yeah. tend to either, uh, we chat a lot, we get, yeah, for those who like to chat. Or we uh, watch sometimes watch videos, movies on our, our own, you know, pads or on the bus itself, listen to music, all sorts of things. There's a yeah, long yeah. journey sometimes, yeah. Uh, what's the longest journey you've ever done on tour? Oh. Well, for, for oh, when we were in America, America's oh, so much driving. I love playing in America, it's brilliant, don't get me wrong. But the tour, because we didn't do it on a tour bus, because most bands would do it on a tour bus. But like I say, we, we like our luxuries now. We're in, we're in our twilight years. Um, so we're like a hotel room at the end of the night, so we've got a little bit of space apart. So each day, the places in America, the, it's so big, the country's so big, the the, the journeys were like nine hours sometimes. Oh, so you know, the bus were nine hours. There were a uh, girls' school and Crucify Barbara, and we were all on the same split of bus, and the gear in another van, and all this. Nice bus, lovely, really luxurious, but nine hours, and you're just getting out to go for a coffee and toilet and food. And it was just, uh, and that was like three days in a row, we did nine hours, got to a hotel, we weren't even a gig at that night, because like, the next, because it was so far, it was like an 18 hour drive. So it's like, yeah. Next nine hours, and then we got to do a gig. We had to do a gig after driving nine hours. Can you imagine? Interviews. Then, then you go on stage and play, which is like eleven o'clock at night. Then you come off and you're all buzzing. You're talking to people and signing autographs. And then you finally get to the hotel, maybe one, two. If you've had a few drinks, whatever, three, <laughs> whatever, four. And then you got bed. Then you got up again about eight, nine. Quick breakfast in the, in the car again, in the van again. Yeah. Listen. Thank you so much, Jackie. Yeah. Thank you so much, as always, please continue to support 69X, we are sharing the big love right here. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you next week.